let's now look at a graph of a trig function that has some stretches and translations in the trig function. So here we are asked to graph y equal to cosine one half of x plus pi over four, and then after that plus one. Now we want to remember that our cosine of our angle is kind of our is our function acting on the input expression. So when I think about that being the cosine of that angle, and I notice that I also have a numerical value multiplied to the front of that cosine function, and after that whole thing is done, I have a number added or subtracted at the end. So if you recall from working with functions with your translations and your stretches, etc., <clears throat> when I have a number as a separate term added or subtracted at the end, that's your vertical shift. When I have a number multiplied to the operation of the function, that's going to be your vertical stretch. When you have a number added or subtracted to the input letter, your x, that's added or subtracted to that in the input, that's the one that gives you your horizontal shift. And remember, those were opposite the sign that you see. And then when you have a multiplication to the variable that's the input that the function is acting on, those are going to be your horizontal stretches or your shrinks. Now in trig, we have a couple different names for just a couple of them. So I still have my vertical shift is that number that's added at the end, but that horizontal shrinking or stretching out that actually is our period change. And then the work with the absolute value of the number that's multiplied to the outside, that vertical stretch, that's called your amplitude for your cosine function and your um, sine function. It does the vertical stretch, but it gives me kind of a maximum away from the horizontal axis that those two particular trig functions would be. I will have vertical stretches with my other four trig functions, the secant of an angle, the cosecant of an angle, the cotangent of an angle, and the tangent of an angle, but it's not called amplitude for those um, four, just because it's not like a maximum stretch away from a horizontal. This um, horizontal shift that I have, that's called the phase shift in trig. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fill out some background information about our graph, and then we'll go ahead and create the graph of it. So the basic graph is what is the function that you want to consider the basic shape that then you're going to do these stretches and things like that. So our basic shape is the cosine acting on our angle. So then I know that I want to start with the cosine function. Now, next up, is there a flip? Well, there's no negative sign as a factor of the multiplication to the trig function, so I'm not flipping it over the horizontal axis. And I don't have a negative factor in what the trig function is acting on, so I'm not flipping it over the y-axis. So there are none for the flips for this one. Now, amplitude. This is a cosine function, so amplitude, it is the absolute value of the number that's multiplied to the trig function when you're dealing with your cosine and your sine. So the absolute value of 2 is 2. Then the period. Now when we want to find out whether we've had any horizontal stretches or compressions, that's what our new period is. And how you find the new period is you take the coefficient that is in front of the angle that you're taking the trig function of, and you take your regular period for that trig function and divide by that coefficient. So the normal period for cosine is 2 pi, and 2 pi divided by a half, well, when I divide by a fraction, I have to multiply by the reciprocal, so that's 2 pi over 1 times 2 over 1, which is 4 pi. So my new period is 4 pi. And then the phase shift, well, to find the phase shift, 
you want to think what X value plugged in would zero out this, would put it back to where it's zeroing out is. And you can actually set that equal to zero and solve for your X in order to get that but it would be a negative pi over 4. So I can write negative pi over 4, or I can write pi over 4 to the left is my phase shift here. And then my vertical shift is up 1. So now when we go through and we want to graph this without having to like guess where we start it and how to move it and all that kind of thing, we're going to take advantage of all this information of our shifts and our stretches to graph it. And we're going to do it in this order. Um, sometimes if you do it out of a different order, then it can get confusing of what you're supposed to do, especially if there's flips as well as vertical shifts. So here we're going to start with the basic y equal cosine x. And we're going to mark our horizontal axis first, so it's in terms of our regular angles. So I have 1, 2, 3 and a little bit is pi, 4, 5, 6 and a quarter-ish is 2 pi, then I have my 3 pi, and then my 4 pi. So my period is 4 pi, so I took it out to 4 pi. And then if I look at um, some other values in this, well, and actually these are enough to get us started, and then we can put in some other values if we need to do the shifts from there. Okay, so now when I think of the regular cosine function, its normal period is from 0 to 2 pi, and when I think about 0 for the angle, zero co um, the cosine of 0 is 1, and then the cosine of pi over 2, so halfway between 0 and pi is pi over 2, is 0. The cosine of pi is negative 1. The cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. And the cosine of 2 pi is 1. And then I could draw some more in there, but I'm just going to do one period of the basic y equal cosine x. So this is my y equal cosine x. So I set up my axis for the what I'm going to result as the new period, but I'm starting my basic shape where it would normally occur. And I just did one period of it. Now next up, we're going to look at the amplitude. The amplitude is a multiplication on these values. So when I have an angle of zero, zero um, in for my angle gave me a 1 out for the cosine, but if I multiply it by, by 2, that will give me a 2 out. And then pi over 2 going in for my angle would give me a 0 out for the cosine, and 2 times 0 is 0 still. And then I get a negative 2, and then a 0, and then a 2 again. So I have this graph. And don't keep going up after that. That's your maximum reach before it starts to come back down. So that's your y equal 2 cosine x. So I'm just trying to build towards this as I go. Next up, the period of 4 pi. What that does is think about like an accordion stretch. So think about having this set and stretching the accordion out where it'll proportionally be stretched out and then land here. Now the thing is they all have to stretch out in a uniform way. So what I have in terms of the start of the period that we've graphed, so when this starts it's at 0 comma 2 and when the end it's at 2 pi comma 2. Halfway through I have pi comma negative 2 and then half of the way through that, I have my pi over 2 comma 0. And then half of the way on the other side of it is 3 pi over 2 comma 0. So those are some key points. Now I'm going to stretch them out. And I want it to start at the 0 but end at the 4 pi. So since this is 0 comma 2 and end at the end of it comma 2, this is going to be at 4 pi comma 2. So we've just taken and stretched that out. 
Now halfway between 0 and 4 pi is 2 pi. And that's where this middle point is going to be. So that's going to be 2 pi comma negative 2. And then halfway between 0 and 2 pi is pi. That's where this pi comma 0 point is going to be. And then halfway between 2 pi and 4 pi is 3 pi. And that's where this 3 pi comma 0 point is going to be. So it ends up giving us this stretched out trig function y equal 2 cosine 1 half x. So now we've stretched out with the new period. Next is our phase shift. We want to move everything a pi over 4 to the left. Now you've got these key points. So whatever these key points are where you have these dots, you just want to move them a pi over 4 to the left. So whatever angle they're hitting those dots at right now, just subtract pi over 4 from that to move it over. So this first starts at 0 comma 2 and I'm moving it a pi over 4 to the left. So that's going to be at negative pi over 4 comma 2. This point is pi comma 0. So if I take pi and I subtract pi over 4, I get 3 pi over 4. So I have 3 pi over 4 comma 0. If I take 2 pi and subtract a pi over 4, I have 7 pi over 4. So we have 7 pi over 4 comma negative 2. If I take 3 pi and subtract a pi over 4, well think 3 pi put into force would be 12 pi over 4. And subtract a pi over 4 would give me 11 pi over 4. And that's where I have that 0. And then 4 pi is 16 pi over 4. Subtract a pi over 4 would give me 15 pi over 4. So here we have our phase shifted graph. And I know it gets really kind of messy at this point. And then the last thing we have to do is the vertical shift up one. So every dot I have on that most recent graph, I'm just going to move up one. So this point goes up one. And then see where it's at? This point goes up one. And following it along, this point goes up one. As we go through. And so we have our final graph. Which is our y equals 2 cosine 1 half of x plus pi over 4 plus 1. Now certainly if you wanted to do this as you built it, but you're like, oh, this looks so messy, I don't know how I'm going to mark which one is the actual final graph, um, certainly then you could copy this on a fresh graph if you'd like to, or just highlight it with a highlighter, um, that sort of thing. You want to gauge what it is that <clears throat> the person looking at it would want to like overall see. But you'll find that this is so much handier when you're trying to graph these trig functions, especially the ones that are shrunk in, because it's really hard to determine what angles to put in for your x if the period is very small. And using this idea of marking it off of the basic trig function graph and doing these changes will really go a long way in helping you kind of see what you need to do in terms of the input of your angles or the ones that you need to mark specifically on your graph.